if you're someone that owns the 16-35mm F4 Zeiss lens from Sony, I can almost guarantee that the thought of upgrading to the F2.8 G Master version has crossed your mind many times. I know that because that thought has been bugging me for many months, and today, I'm going to put that debate to rest by comparing the two lenses. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Bernard and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'll be comparing both the f4 and the f2.8 version of the 16-35mm lens from Sony. I am aware that there are existing comparisons video out there, and the common consensus is that the G Master has slightly superior optical quality over the Zeiss. However, I will be reviewing these two lenses from a videographer's perspective, and image quality is not all that matters. I will be putting both lenses through a series of tests that are important to filmmaking and find out which is more suitable for video work. And before you guys comment that the Tamron 17 to 28 is a good alternative, I would like to clarify that I've owned that lens before, but I've sold it in favor of the Zeiss. In fact, I have made a video comparing the two lenses before. In my opinion, that lens is good, but I had to let go of it for two main reasons. Firstly, the focal range 17 to 28 is just not versatile enough for me. Secondly, that lens is not compatible with my dive housing while these two lenses are. With that clarification out of the way, let's just focus on these two lenses. I would like to give a shout out to Camera Rental Center for setting me up and loaning me this lens for this review. Do note that this is not a sponsored video and my opinion is not influenced in any way. In fact, they have both lenses available for rent, so it doesn't matter either way. Without further ado, let's begin the testing. The first thing I want to test is image quality. Many other videos have already shown that the G Master has better image quality than the Zeiss. However, they usually compare photos shot with high megapixels and they pixel peak. However, 4K, which is the highest resolution available in most cameras, is approximately only 8.3 megapixels. Therefore, I only want to compare the image quality of the 4K footage captured on both lenses. I begin by shooting at 16mm with the widest aperture for each lens. At first glance, you wouldn't notice much difference. But the moment you put the footage side by side, you can start to tell which lens has a superior image quality. Even without cropping in or pixel peeping, the difference is visible. I feel that the details in the building are much sharper with the G Master. Especially when you look at the corner of the frame, you can see that the Zeiss lens has a poorer image quality. Next, we look at the footage when both lenses have the same aperture of f4. Just a side note, all the sample footage you see in this video is shot in 4K and color corrected with the exact same settings. If the color looks different, it is probably because the lens renders the image differently. Once again, I find that the G Master has a noticeable superior image quality when you put the image side by side. This might be a rather boring segment, so if you want a short answer, the G Master indeed has a better image quality compared to the Zeiss. However, I only notice the difference when I compare the footage side by side. When looking at the shots from the Zeiss lens on its own, I did not think that it was lousy in any way. In fact, I was surprised that it could be better. Anyways, skip to this part of the video to check out my next test unless you want to watch more sample footage of different focal lengths with different apertures. The next test is a bokeh test. One big reason to get a G Master over the Zeiss is the wider aperture. However, if we do not take the better low light performance into consideration, is there still another reason to get the f2.8? This is shot at 16mm with the widest aperture of each lens. As you can see, at this focal length, the difference in background blur is noticeable but not significant. Next, I shot at 35mm with the widest aperture. At this focal length, the background blur with the G Master is much more significant. However, that bokeh was achieved when the lens was held very close to the subject. 
Would the bouquet still be as significant in other shooting situations? A common situation I use this lens for is vlogging. In this example, I hold a camera one some length away from me. I personally feel that there isn't much of a difference unless you put it side by side to compare. Another potential use I have for this lens is a talking head shot. In this situation, I find that the difference in background blur is much more significant, but if I really wanted to blur up the background, I would go for a faster lens or a tighter focal length. In conclusion, the bokeh of the G Master is better than the Zeiss and in some situations, it will be more noticeable. However, I don't think that this should be a big reason to pick the f2.8 over the f4. The third test has something to do with weight. And let's just assume for one moment that I'm really strong and carrying something heavy doesn't matter to me. However, the weight of the lens might potentially affect the performance of a gimbal. I am using the Weibo S for my test and this is a relatively powerful gimbal that on paper can handle both setups. In my experience, balancing both setups is equally easy. Let's now take a look at the sample footage captured on both setups. I tried using both setups in different modes and I must say that the gimbal handled all of them very well. At certain angles, you can hear the motors working harder to keep the G Master stable. After reviewing the footage, it does seem that the shots from the Zai setup looks a tad bit smoother but I would still confidently use the G Master on the gimbal. Although both setups will work on gimbals really well, I would give the slight edge to the F4 combination and your gimbal motors would thank you for that. Also, I know I said earlier to imagine that I am strong, but the reality is, weight matters and I would rather carry something lighter if possible. The fourth test will be image stabilization. The Zeiss lens comes with built-in optical stabilization or the G Master doesn't. Here are a few different situations of me using these lenses and help. After reviewing the footage, I must say that if given a choice, I would prefer my lens to have optical stabilization as I think it helps. However, I don't think that it is a deal breaker that a G Master does not have optical stabilization and it would not be an issue if I wanted to get that lens. The fifth test is the autofocus performance of each lens. First up, we will check out the focus shifting and breathing performance of both lenses. In this situation, I find that the focus shift of the Zeiss was much more natural and responsive, especially when it was focusing from far to close. I was actually surprised by the results that I had to double check to make sure I did not mix up the footage by accident. For the tap to focus test, I think both lens performed equally well. Next, I'll be testing out the tracking performance. I chose to use a dog as my subject, as tracking humans would be way too easy and I wanted it to be a challenge. I had to strain my eyes to find problems and I did spot a few brief moments where the focus went off 
but I think it did so in a very acceptable and natural way that you will not find it to be a problem. This was the case for both lenses. I wanted to up the challenge further by shooting in a low light area and underexposing the clip. Once again, both lenses performed equally well. Safe to say, the autofocus performance of both lenses performed really well and it will not be a factor that affects my choice in the lenses. The sixth and final test is the manual focus performance on both lenses. In certain situations in videography, it is definitely much better to rely on manual focus over autofocus. Unfortunately, most of Sony lenses uses the focus by wire system and these two lenses are no exception. I would like to do a quick test to see if there's a difference if I choose to shift the focus manually. In my testing, although both lenses are focused by wire, I feel like the G Master was much more consistent and easy to manage. After that series of testing on aspects I think matter to videographers, I think I'm ready to conclude the video. For my particular situation, I think that I'll stick to the 16 to 35 mm f4 lens for now. As much as I want the better image quality of the G Master, my current clientele will not notice the difference, nor will they pay me for it. I think that it is a matter of time before I make the upgrade, but that will be further down the road when there is a need for it. In the meantime, I will enjoy the optical stabilization and the weight of my Zeiss lens. I do think that the G Master lens is a worthy consideration if you are very particular about image quality, or if your clients are the kind that know about cameras. With the f2.8, you will get to enjoy better low light performance and better bokeh. Also, you get customizable buttons on the lens that although not essential, it certainly improves workflow. If money was no concern, I would definitely go for the G Master. But since it does, I will just stick to renting that lens if I happen to be working on a project that requires top quality. Do check out Camera Rental Center and their range of items should you ever need to rent something. Link will be in description. You can also consider renting a lens before committing thousands of dollars to buying a new one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. That's it for this video. It's a wrap.